Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to PowerCoast. Welcome to Power Tip 39. We're going to look at a buck converter and see that you get more than just efficiency improvement when you go with synchronous rectifiers. The challenge in the buck power supply many times is getting good transient response over a very wide load range. Many times people uh, have requirements down to zero output current and then have a relatively large step on the output current. And with it Discontinuous operation, you'll find that you do not get very good transient response in this case. A couple of approaches to improve the transient response at light loads are uh, preloading the output of the power supply or by putting a swinging inductor in the power supply. With a preload, you pay a penalty on efficiency. Many times the preloads are 10% of the output power, so at light loads, your efficiency is greatly impacted. A swinging inductor is made with a composite core. The core will have a portion that is ferrite and have a portion that is powdered iron. At light currents, the ferrite is not saturated and it has a lot of permeability and so the, the, the inductor has very high value and, and you have uh, very low ripple currents in it. Then as the current increases, the ferrite saturates and you rely on the uh, powdered iron to give you the permeability. The downside to the swinging inductor is that it greatly impacts the loop response of the power supply and then it adds cost to the power supply. A better approach is to replace the diode in a buck power stage with a MOSFET and keep the power supply continuous all the time. We use this buck power supply to demonstrate our transient response and control loop characteristics when we allowed the power supply to go discontinuous and then we compared it against a continuous case. This is a pretty simple power supply. We uh, buck power stage, input switches here, output inductor here, and then, then our controller is a, a TI part. It features voltage mode control and we're able to achieve pretty wide bandwidth with this particular approach. This slide shows Discontinuous operation and continuous operation. The discontinuous case is on, on the left. We're showing the output voltage response to a step in load current. On the left-hand case, the discontinuous case, we see a, a quite a large variation in the output voltage as the current is stepped from zero to seven-tenths of an amp. In this particular approach, we, we have a diode as the catch element in, in the power stage. Over here on the right, we replace the diode with a MOSFET and kept the current in the output inductor continuous during the whole uh, range of currents that we were operating over. So in this case, a zero to seven tenths volt step in the output current resulted in about a third of the output variation that we had in the other case. So you see quite good performance improvements with the continuous operation. Now, this demonstrates what happens to the control. On the left side, we have the discontinuous case, and on the right side, we have the continuous case. Over here on the, on the right side, we have a 50 kilohertz crossover frequency on the power supply. We have good phase margin. And you can see what happens when we go discontinuous. The mid-band gain just craters. Uh, we've lost 10 or 20 dB of, of gain here in, in these frequencies, and that impacts our output impedance of our power supply, and hence the transient response. We also see that the poles that are associated with the output filter that were around 15 kilohertz in this case, well, looks like there's a single pole, and, it, and it's moved to lower frequency, and that, that's what's killed our gain. And you can also see the phase has deteriorated also, and that's because that pole's moved back up. You're working against um, the integrator of, of the air amplifier and output filter pole set by the output capacitor and, and the load resistance. So in summary, discontinuous operation gets you more than efficiency. It allows you to improve the load transient response in your power supply. For more power tips, Visit Power Management Design Line and search Power Tips, 
or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video.